We got Scott back and he's going to be singing in just a moment. I hope that it'll bless you as I know it always blesses me. And I hope and pray that uh, we can get this behind us maybe by the end of the month and, uh, and get back into God's house to worship together because I certainly do miss you. And I don't mind telling you, I went down every pew and every name I mentioned in prayer uh, in the early mornings that uh, calling you by name and just letting God just lift you up to him in every way. And I thank God for you, and I mean that. And I just pray that the love of God is in your heart. So I hope and pray today that you join us, bringing your spirit with us in every manner that we may glorify God in our worship. Now, we're not going to be having Wednesday night service, and, uh, but again, uh, tune in next Sunday for the 11 o'clock service, and we'll continue. But once we do, once we get through this, we're hoping it the first week in October that we'll be able to open back up to everybody. And I pray that we be praying hard that God is going to let that happen and allow us to let that happen. And I hope and pray you do. Okay, Scott. I asked the preacher, <laughs> what he wanted me to sing. He always, he always picks, go ahead, Cindy. He always picks this one. Had to be so, cause Jesus said so. 
have your Bibles, turn to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Now, I'm going to be preaching from all of Habakkuk today. Hope you got your popcorn ready and your drinks by your side and everything just getting ready for a long... If you sit for a ball game, you sit through a ball game for a couple of hours. So, you know, there's no reason you can't sit before the Lord for a couple of hours. Just kidding. You know, yesterday, <clears throat> we celebrated 9-11, which was 20 years ago. Let me ask you a question. Who allowed 9-11 to happen? You may say the terrorists did, but I'm telling you that God did. I'm telling you that how many times has God warned this country and given us far warnings to make sure that we didn't let things happen like 9-11 for many, many years. But you see, our country now has broken God's laws. We have no fear of God. And therefore, the hedge that was once around this country has been taken down, not by God, but by us. And when that takes place, that opens the door for any and everything to come in. Just like this COVID. The title of my message today is COVID-19, Our Questions and God's Peace. How does a prophet who wrote a book 2,500 years ago speak to us during this global pestilence? Well, I can tell you that this is what we'll be talking about today. Currently, we're in a pandemic, and I want to read you some of the stats that I've picked up on this, and, and this swept through our world in, in less than three months. This, this respiratory illness called COVID-19, oh, I'm not talking about the Delta virus or the Nipah or the Limpa. These are other viruses that are attached to mutations of COVID. And they are yet a couple of them to come. And they're already raising eyes and eyebrows because the Nipta, for example, it kills 50 to 75% of the people who catch that virus. It is done with colds and fears and it has fevers. It's got respiratory problems. And a lot of times the fever itself is what basically takes your life. And then the limba, it, it messes with the motor skills. In other words, it's going to cause a lot of people that's in good health, if they catch this virus, it will be like the polio virus. It's going to cause people to be lame or like they have MS. So I want to say something to you today. This respiratory illness that we see today, and it's a worldwide pandemic, has caused a great deal of distress and, and anxiety. And, 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 and we got this unsuspectingly, just like 9-11. It came on us by surprise, because let me give you the facts. On March the 1st, 2020... In this great United States of America, which I'm proud of and love with all my heart, we had only 30 cases of COVID-19. March 2020, just a little th over three weeks later, the U.S. had over 85,000 reported cases. As of September the 1st of 2021, 221,648,869 cases is in 221 countries. 4,606,949 deaths. Friend, who's allowed this? What has happened to the world? Well, I can assure you right now that one of the problems we have is God has took the hedge down 
because we have asked him to because we don't fear him anymore. And now we're worshiping all kinds of other gods. Just the other day, a young lady in her 40s, she said that she knew that Jesus had married Mary Magdalene and that they had a child together. I said, girl, if that happened, it ain't in my scripture, but I'm going to make sure you understand something. That's not the Jesus that's on the cross that you're talking about. You have a falsification of who Christ is. And one of the pandemics that we have today in the spiritual realm is that very thing. We have people who are thinking that Jesus is this and he is not the real Jesus of Scripture. Therefore, we're praying to a false God. This country believes that since it's the law, it's okay to do it, but they go against God's law. I'm telling you with all my heart, we have opened the door. And by the way, COVID-19 is a respiratory illness. And you also must realize above other things that the Delta virus means door. That's the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet, and it means door. A door has been opened, and now everything that wants to enter is coming. You see, you're not going to be able to keep up with vaccines because the door is open. The door is going to continuously let every single thing unimaginable and unsuspecting come into this world and into this country. You have a time to really have a magnificent thought and heart to repent to God because without that, that's not going to go in any manner. But let me tell you something, Habakkuk. Habakkuk's seen some of this in his time. His was pretty much, I believe, he thought it was pretty much global because that was his little world. And we're feeling the effects of this virus. We're globally finding ourselves in a situation that we have not experienced before. And we find ourselves asking the question, what's going on? Will this directly impact me? Will it impact someone I know? Will will things ever get back to normal? Will we go back to church again? Will church be ever like it once was? You'll have to answer that question yourself. Because God is allowing this pandemic to touch everyone in some way or another. There's not a person I know that doesn't know someone, if not their own family, that's been affected. Our church family. Before the Delta virus came along, we were just seemed like God was taking care of us. But somehow or another, we've either done something or wrong, but I would say to us that our faith has dwindled. And the allowance has affected our church. There was someone else who had questions for God. God, why are you allowing this pandemic? God, why don't you do something about it? Well, Habakkuk, This person also felt the effects of not understanding God's ways. And that's what we're here today to have an understanding of. Today I want us to turn to Habakkuk, and I understand that if you don't know where Habakkuk is, you go to Matthew and go back four books and you'll find the book of Habakkuk. If you know the book of Habakkuk, you're going to recall that the theme of this book revolves around God's justice. I'm in no position to say anything about God's justice or even the coronavirus. That's not my intent. My intention for bringing this book to light is the fact that Habakkuk saw what was going on around him and he didn't understand it, so he questioned God. Preacher, can we question God? Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he, he would enjoy any conversation as long as it's coming from the heart. Sometimes the question is more authentic than the prayer because it comes from our hearts. 
Then Habakkuk was assured by God that the righteous would live by faith. Then watching Habakkuk's transformation, and that's what I want you to see, we too can move into a position of question and concern to a position of faithful living. So who is, who is Habakkuk? Well, Habakkuk was a prophet who wrote the book of Habakkuk around 600 B.C. And you have to see here that this was right in the time of the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the first time you would see the word Chaldeans, as we'll mention sometimes in the Old Testament. So this was a very unsettling time. God chose to use a pagan civilization to bring judgment on God's people. Let me get something very straight to you. Some of you are standing there saying, God wouldn't do this. Let me make sure you understand the God that you need to fear. God will not let anything happen that will happen. Nobody has his power. Nobody can stop whatever God puts forth. This world pandemic is for a reason. That's why, again, if Habakkuk was here, he'd be saying, God, why are you allowing such a thing to happen to your people? You see, my friend, let me tell you something. It's happened to the saved and the unsaved. It's happening to old. It's happening to the young. It doesn't have a preference. It's attacking everyone. So I want you to see here that Habakkuk didn't like this idea as he thought the solution was worse than the problem itself because God had chosen a nation, a nation of the Chaldeans, the Babylonians and the Syrians to come into the country of Israel and defeat them. And he says, wait a minute, God. I know my people and your people are bad, but they're not as bad as the people you're sending in here. Now, we'll take a look at COVID. We'll look at the pandemic and we'll say, God, you know, we couldn't be this bad that you would put such a, a, a terrible, terrible pestilence on your people. I think sometimes it just shows us how far we've gotten away from God because the punishment is always justified. God doesn't do anything that's not justified. So understand today that God is telling us that this is something that he's allowed. So Abaca, he questions and complains to God concerning God's ways. Now I want us to see, beginning in Habakkuk chapter 1, and we're going to be doing seven verses here, but I want you to listen very carefully. This is Habakkuk's complaint in the first four verses. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou shalt not hear? Even crying to thee of violence and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. God, you are doing this wrong. There is no justice in what you are doing. You are using a people that's worse than the people that you're punishing. Why are you doing that? That just don't make sense to me, God. Well, God answered him. He answered him very simply. Look in verses 5 through 7. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They're terrible and dreadful, their judgment of their iniquity shall proceed of themselves. Now God continues in his dialogue to Habakkuk. 
and how horrible they are. But let's jump to the next dialogue we see here in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Are thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine holy one? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment, O mighty God. Thou, thou hast established them for correction. Thou art pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth a man that is more righteous than he? You can just see Habakkuk clearly does not understand the ways of Almighty God. Do you know why a lot of people don't understand the ways of God? They don't fear God. As your pastor, I'm not going to inflate this, but there has not been a single day that I can recall this week that I haven't had people outside of this church, outside of this church, outside of this county, outside of all of this, calling. Pastor, would you pray with me? Please pray with me. Pastor, I need you to pray with me. God has laid it on my heart for you to pray with me. Why? You see, I'm not a, a genie. I'm not a, a magician. I believe this. I fear God. And you must understand that justification comes by fear. Now listen to me. He says the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? Those that fear God. We have a society today, they don't fear God at all. Look at the lawmakers. They make laws that goes against the word of God. They do all these things. They don't have a fear of God. But God says the just shall live by faith. Who is the just? The just is those who fear God. So understand what is taking place here. And so <clears throat> we see that he's speaking in a great manner, but God is God. If God were simply a better version of us, once that we took and looked at him, emulated him, then he's not God at all. And that's the problem that we have. Too many people will say, well, me and the man upstairs, he's not a man upstairs, he's God, he's holy. But we have people that are bringing God down on the level of man. And then since you've got away with sin, you'll continue in sin and get further in sin and further away from God because God didn't judge you. So God says, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to judge the whole world with a pandemic. And let's see where your faith falls. Habakkuk, you see all these things happening? Habakkuk, what is wrong with you? Why do you not fear me? He says, but I do, Lord. Sometimes we don't know everything that's going on. And in some situations, we won't know the full reason behind certain situations. And many times we will not understand on this side of glory the many things that God allows because it's a mystery to us. And that is today, I want an understanding. I want my food fast. I want my way. I don't want a, a long sermon preacher. I don't like any of this stuff. Make sure it's precise. Do this, do that. I want it my way. And God says it's not going to be your way no more. I'm going to keep sending them. I'm going to continuously take people that you love. I'm going to continuously continue in this until you realize that no scientist can save you. No vaccine can inoculate you. But only God will be the answer. You say, preacher, that's your opinion. You take it whatever you wish. I take it from the Word of God. 
So Habakkuk was confused and he began to question God and, and God's ability to deal with injustice. <clears throat> so God's response is the central point of this book. Understand this, in God's second response to Habakkuk, we get a glimpse of what life should, should, should look like when we don't know what's going on. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Behold his soul which is lifted up. Now, what does that mean, lifted up? Puffed up, full of pride. Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. God's calling out the Chaldean. The Chaldean's soul is puffed up. He's full of pride. Now, let me tell you something. Any person that's full of pride don't have anything within him that's right with God, not right with himself, and he's definitely not right with anybody else. That prideful person is blinded in everything they do. And yet they're so arrogant and so filled with pride they don't recognize God. They don't even recognize their own blindness. They don't recognize they're walking in darkness. Faith, that is not even their vocabulary. They don't even know what faith would be. Their faith is in their pride. Not even within them own selves. That's who the Chaldeans are. They're coming arrogantly. They're coming with the prideful confidence that they're going to destroy Israel. You know, it's amazing to me that what's going on, our faith to trust God regardless of how things look, He calls us to live a life of faith. Now, the COVID and the Delta virus can't be seen. We don't know who has it unless we test them. But so is faith. The only way we can know we have the right kind of faith is to be tested. And that's what God's doing today with this pandemic. He's testing our faith. And by the way, a faith that can't be tested is not a faith at all. James chapter 1 verses 2 and 4. Listen to me. Count it all joy, my brothers. When you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Now, what does steadfast mean? Firm belief. Firm belief. Whenever you see the word steadfast in the Bible, it means firm belief. And let steadfastness, our firm belief, have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. We're not alone in experiencing the trials of life. We will all meet trials. Without them, it's impossible to attain a more and mature faithful life in Christ Jesus. We long for a deeper connection with God, but often it takes trials and tribulations for us to have that, and we don't want the trials and the tribulation. We just want Jesus loves me, and that's all. What kind of faith? Does it take to just say Jesus loves me and that's all I want? What about Jesus judges me? No, 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 no. He judges the drunk and the sinner. No, 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 no. You got to understand something. God made it very plain. Without faith, you cannot please me. Now, I'm going to test your faith to see where you really stand. Habakkuk, he was thinking more of the people, just like we are in this pandemic, more of the people than about God. He has made everything, and so have we. We have gone to the scientists for a vaccine instead of going to prayer with God first. Our faith is not in God first, but the things of the world. And God says, if you are a friend of the world, you're an enemy of mine. How can you say you love God when you're going to the world before you're going to God? God is strong and, and he's courageous and he's loving. 
But we don't go to him. Do you not believe that God is all-knowing and all-powerful in every single thing? That is something this scientist is not. I hear people say, well, <laughs> I'm not really worried about all of this. The scientists will figure it out. I got news for you. They haven't figured it out. And they're not going to until everybody turns themselves back to the Lord. And that's not going to happen. So you can count this as just something that's going to proceed to get worse and worse and worse. Oh, preacher, <laughs> you, you're talking gloom and doom. Friend, it is gloom and doom without God. Darkness, gloom and doom dwells in darkness. And that's where we're walking today. You see, trials and tribulations are one of the few certainties we have in life. None of us can escape the peaks and valleys that we encounter. There's not a person I know that doesn't go through mountaintops and valleys in some way or another. And you've got to realize that the spiritual grime of those valleys produces... A sacred growth. You grow in the valley, not on the mountaintop. Without faith, you cannot please God. So you're being tested for what you call your faith. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. Today, the modern church has substituted faith for determination. They're determined to grow a bigger church. Let me give you God's word. I will grow my church. Man has moved God out of the way and shown him how big they can make their church. Listen to me very carefully. I'd rather be in a small church that's filled with the Spirit of God than in a big church that men are growing and God's not growing. And that's where we are. Habakkuk chapter 3. And now for the transformation of someone who comes from an honest place of questioning God... To an honest place of living, a life of faith, listen now to the words of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And hear this transformation. This is something really powerful. Remember where Habakkuk came from in chapter 1, questioning God, where he, he's in this situation, he's asking God if he really cared. Well, Habakkuk now knows what he is called to live by faith for. And, and to have that life of faith. And while this book is dealing with injustice and Habakkuk's response to that injustice, I think we can see the power of being called to a life of faith in the midst of this pandemic, the coronavirus. And when we do, this prayer can be natural response. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Now all of this is the judgment of God. Now I'm going to stop right there for just one second, and I want to remind you of something. I went to Food Line. I couldn't get everything I needed. They were out of it. Didn't know when they'd get it. I went to Walmart. They were out of it. They didn't know when they'd get it. Grocery store after grocery store. Have you ever seen the shelves so empty? Have you ever seen things that you used to just take for granted would be there when you went there are no longer there? You're missing more than the sickness the pandemic is causing scarcity. The pandemic is causing people to hoard by. They don't care about their neighbor. They don't care about their fellow man. As long as they can stockpile. So, the shells are going to be bare. Verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Now this is Habakkuk. What a change he's had from, from chapter 1 where he's questioning God, wanting to know 
why God is letting all this evil take place. Now he's saying, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my hind places. I don't care for the spiritual Christian magazine that's being put out today that says, now listen folks, God wants you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. You must subscribe to this Christian magazine. If you're a Christian, you can't be without it. It's only going to cost you $30 a year. And by the way, there's also envelopes in this magazine that you can send donations to some of these pastoral ministries that believe that you don't need to be sick. You can be healthy and wise. All you got to do is plant the seed and God will make you well and protect you from this pandemic. Lie, lie, lie. But how many are gullible enough to believe such a thing? Verse 18 and 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine hind places. Who's going to do it? God is. God has not promised peace and prosperity in these days in which we live. So much is being promised to us today. Habakkuk gives you the answer right here and the answer to your problems. Trust him. Habakkuk, through faith, is trusting God, has found peace. He's found peace in devastating times. I find few Christians today that are at peace <coughs> during this pandemic. Why do I have peace? Because I believe the Word of God. Does that protect me? No. Does that mean I'll never get it? No. But I walk by faith. What is my faith? I know who's done it, and I know who's in charge. I know for sure who took my children. I know for sure who saved my soul. I know for sure the sickness that's here. I know the prosperity of things. I know the things that it makes me poor and sorrowful and without. And I know who's in charge of all of that. His name is God Almighty. That's my faith. I don't care how many pandemics come. I do, but I say that in a cliche way to say, I know who's allowing it. Who allowed 9-11? You say, well, we got him, Osama bin Laden. Well, you better send the army to heaven because it was God who allowed it. God has allowed every single thing. He may have allowed your child to have sickness, says Scott. But he spared a life. Friend, what is it going to take for you to understand you're looking for answers and they're all in front of God? Habakkuk, he went to God with his complaint. One thing I can say about Habakkuk, Habakkuk knew that God had allowed that evil. God, how come you ain't punishing these evil people? God, I want you to punish them. Look at the evil that's in Israel. <coughs> God says, Habakkuk, you're not going to like the way that I'm going to correct this. I'm going to send the Chaldeans. Habakkuk says, well, that don't make any sense at all. They're worse than what we are. Well, I want to make sure you understand something. God doesn't have to explain himself. And when it don't make sense, that's when you should have the greatest faith. When you don't have anything that's sensible <clears throat> and a sensible explanation, that's when you ought to get on your knees and say, God, I don't understand it, but I know you're in charge. I walk by faith. I know that whatever is going to happen or going to occur, your hand is on it. I beg for your mercy. 
for your mercy endureth forever. But we're not doing that. We're looking for man to take care of man's problem. God's just going to increase man's problems. Do you know what's going to cause that? Our unbelief in God being in charge. You know, a guy told me, he says, Preacher, how do you feel about in God we trust on our money? I said, well, do we really trust God? He said, oh, yeah. I said, well, let's see. That money buys prostitution. In God we trust. That money buys liquor that makes a man go home and beat his wife and his children do without food. In God we trust. I said, what a mockery. Why don't they just take in God we trust off there because we're lying because we don't trust in God. And we motto that and we, oh, we'll fight against that being taken off of our money. And God says, you ain't trust me. You don't even know me. But you'll know me after this pandemic's. After I send the earthquakes and the storms and the fires and everything else that's going to occur throughout the world, you'll know who I am. And you won't forget me. Fear me will show respect to me. And that's what we are not doing. COVID-19 took the world by storm. That's just no question. We have questions. We have fears. We have worries. We don't believe in the prosperity gospel, but we are now starting to question our belief and how far it goes. The letter starts with the back of questioning God. How could he question God? Now, before we cast too much judgment and opinion on Habakkuk, there's something that he's doing here that we must ask ourselves if we're doing it. Habakkuk is talking to God. Are we, going to be, are we going to be talking to God and being real? Are we engaging with the living God and asking Him to help us understand the current situations that we're going through? God expects us to pray. Are you praying? Yeah, I, I, I said, God is great, God is good, let us thank Him for our food. By His hands we must be fed, give us, Lord, our daily bread. Lord, Heal my sister. Lord, heal my brother. Lord, heal my child. Lord, heal my dad. Lord, heal my friend. Okay. Who are you praying to? Well, I'm praying to God. The other night I had my <coughs> granddaughter to spend the night, her and my great-granddaughter, my Rose, for... Whatever the reason they chose, I don't know, but I, it was fine. But her and her husband sat down and was talking to me, and, and by the way, I was talking to them about God. Hold on. <laughs> Satan always wants me to have a runny nose when I'm preaching. Now listen. I said, do you know how to increase your faith in God? Now they have Bible study in their home. I'm talking about they have their own devotions and everything. And I said, do you know how to increase your faith in God? And they was looking at each other. No. I said, Stephanie, what do you know about your grandfather? Now, I'm not going to tell you all the good things she said. But I will tell you she said I was smart and good looking. <laughs> and she wasn't lying. I said, well, let me ask you a question. What do you know about your husband? What do you know about your child? Do you know more about them and me than you know more about God? I don't know. I said, you know how to increase your faith? Do you believe in me as your grandfather? Yeah? I said, why? Because you're a man of God and you preach God's Word and you pray and you care for people and you love them. Okay? How do you increase your faith? 
tell me. I said, know more about Jesus. The more you know about somebody, the more you're going to believe in them. She said, Papa, thank you. Why? Because you need to share God and share the understanding of God. You know, God expects us to pray. He expects us to come to Him with our questions, our fears, our desires. He tells us in Matthew 6, when you pray. Well, when do you pray? There's an implied understanding just in that little bit of word. When you pray. That we will pray and we will talk to the living God. The hard question must be asked, are we more of an expert on the coronavirus because of the constant stream of information that we're getting on the news networks? But yet we know less of God. You can't fear somebody you don't know. You can't call on somebody that doesn't know you. Pick up the phone and punch your buttons in, all kind of numbers. And when somebody says hello, and you say, well, I just called to talk to you a little bit about you. Well, who is this? And you tell them your name, and they say, well, I don't know you. Most of the time, they'd say, click, with me." Well, what about God? When you dial his number, when you get on your knees, or when you sit in your chair, And you say, God, I need you. And God says, do you know who I am? You say, well, I know you died for my sins. I know Jesus died for my sins and he he was put in a grave and he rose again the third day. Well, that's a really good start. Because first of all, you have to tell God, what you know of him before you address the question. And that's so very important. You see, being informed is an expense of going to the world first and God second. There's a life of faith in Habakkuk 2 4. This is the most important verse in the scripture. Habakkuk chapter 2, I'm backing you up now to verse 4. The just shall live by his faith. Notice that the verse mentions two groups of individuals, which the world is talking about. It's talking about the lifted up, the prideful person who's puffed up. Their souls are puffed up. And the just man who's living by his faith in God. This points to the fact that our lives are to be lived with an understanding that we don't know all that God is doing, but we know that he is good. And we know that He is all-powerful. And we know that He knows everything that is taking place. Even if current circumstances looks like evil is winning, it is not. It will run its course. And God will set His foot down, and that will be the end of it. I might not be in my lifetime. Might not be in your lifetime. But my faith is God is in charge. And it may look like this punch is winning. But they're not. My faith tells me that there is nothing greater than God. Think of Peter, for example, when he told Jesus that he couldn't go and be killed. What was Jesus' response? Matthew 16, 23. Get thee behind me, Satan. You're a hindrance of me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. What Jesus was saying would happen to him seems contrary to what me or Peter or anybody else wanted him to do. No, we didn't want Jesus to die. No. No then if he don't die, 
you're going to die to a life of sin and a place of eternity. My faith tells me this pandemic is from God. Now they'll put this, they can put it on TV if they want to. But my God can stop anything and start anything and close the door on anything and open the door on anything. And when we get back to fearing God and understanding, I know that everything that's happening don't look right and it looks like it's an endless, perilous time. But my faith tells me, don't worry. I know in my heart God is still on the throne and He's in charge. Regardless of where it's going. And let me tell you something. It's going to cost some of us some heartbreaking times. But you must not let your faith waver. Listen to me. Peter's faith wavered. Moses' faith wavered. About everybody in the Bible, their faith wavered except Jesus. Jesus says, the Father sent me to do His will. And His faith was doing the will of the Father. And if you're a child of God, you must follow in the same footsteps. That says, I know that things don't look good, but an all-knowing God, an all-powerful God, God, not you. The devil, he thinks he's in charge, but he's created. Scientists think they're in charge, but they're created. You and I may think we're in charge, but we're created. God has always been because he was never created. He's God. And there is nothing. Nothing. More powerful. Than my God. You know. We all long to have this peace that Habakkuk had. To close I want to give you a little illustration about peace. And, and how it's not denying reality. But it's living our lives in face to face. An artist illustration of peace Paul tells us in Philippians 4 6 do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus you know to go to the Lord with thanksgiving and supplication supplication means humbleness and request when we do we're assured that the peace of God will guard our hearts. The peace of God will guard our hearts. Do you know why and when and how? You say no. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about this pandemic. I'm talking about the trials in your life. Do you know why some people are not rattled? Because the peace of God that can only come from God Guards your heart against worry, anxiety, all the, the shakiness of wondering what's going to happen politically, spiritually, medically, financially. It doesn't make any difference. If you've got the peace of God, there is nothing that is going to enter your heart but the peace of God. In closing, there's a millionaire that decided that uh, he'd commissioned three artists to paint a large painting of their understanding of what peace would be like. And so they, they worked on this. The millionaire's vision had to be accepted. So the first one stepped up and the millionaire said, please explain how your painting depicts peace. Well, he, he revealed his painting. He was revealing a, a very beautiful stream in the middle of a snow-capped mountains. Fresh snow had fallen and it was quite a uh, truly serene scene. And 
he said, well, it, it really is. Uh, me, I appreciated the work and told him just to have a seat. He hadn't decided who would win. The second one stepped forward and he says, well, uh, please explain your painting. He said, well, the second artist revealed it. And, and it was a beautiful meadow lying beneath a blue sky and with a handful of white clouds during the sky. And it does look serene and beautiful, just beautiful. The fields were lined with wildflowers, displaying all the colors of the rainbow. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. He told the man to have a seat. The third artist got up and to me I asked, please explain your painting. And the artist revealed his painting displaying a powerful and dangerous waterfall with jagged rocks all around. The millionaire was inquisitive about it and he says, how does this image of stress and chaos portray peace? He said, sir, if you look past the chaos, you will find a mother bird sitting behind that waterfall in peace. Friend, listen to me. What does that mean? That means that with all the chaos and the pandemic that's going on, I am like that bird. I have the peace of God in my heart. I'm behind the chaos. The chaos is in front of me. The pandemic's in front of me. All of these things are real and they're right there. But I'm in the peaceful place and that peaceful place is the refuge of God Almighty in my life. I take refuge in Him. Where do you take your refuge? That's the difference of having that peace that can only come from God. You see, uh, Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 tells us, Don't be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you don't have the peace... Now, don't let it be a false peace. How do I have this peace? Because my God is all-knowing. My God is all-powerful. My God is everywhere. And there is something I can't be, nor the scientists. They are not all-knowing. They're not all-powerful. And they're not everywhere. But God is. Where are you finding your peace? It must be in your prayer, telling God, meaning it with your heart. God, regardless of what's going on, you are my peace, you are my refuge, and in you will I put my trust. And I pray you do that today. And Father, thank you for your words. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of your words. Let us ask you, Lord, if you would, please, Lord, in every man, just let us understand that we need that peace and understanding that can only come from you. And I pray it all through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Each 
Dismiss us, please. Amen.